Hi, everyone. Welcome to our second webinar in the Day of the Life series. We're so happy to have you joining us today. And Rebecca will be talking to us this afternoon for the next 30 minutes about her role as the Director of Operations here for our business School of Business. We're really excited to hear from her and more about her career journey. And we hope that these webinars will help you as you're considering your next step in your own career journey, um, figuring out what that could look like and what opportunities are available to you. So thank you so much, Rebecca, for joining us. We are going to spend the next 20 minutes just doing a Q&A between you and I. And then the final 10 minutes, we will be sourcing questions from students. So if you have a question, please post it in the chat um, side, and we will do our best to get to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. My first question for you, Rebecca, it is what was your path to becoming uh, a director of operations here at Udacity. Great, and thank you everyone for, for coming. I'm happy to be here and excited to answer questions. Um, so I had somewhat of a non-traditional path in becoming a director of operations, especially for a school of business. I started out um, studying philosophy, specifically the philosophy of mathematics and logic, and really just thought I would end up being a professor and I would stay in academia and stay in the university. Uh, kind of culture. And then I got married while I was in school and uh, I had my first child and decided I really wanted to focus on my family with a young person at home. And so I took some time off. And while I was home with my kiddos, I, uh, I after I had my child, <laughs> um, just kind of like an at-home business. Um, I was making some, you know, handmade hats and things like that, and I was selling children's books because that was kind of the world I was in. Um, and it was right around the same time that blogs became popular and social media really kind of came onto the scene. And there was, um, there were no courses for so it was really just new. And so I really taught myself to do online marketing and as such I, I was very popular in in my community and the company that I was selling books for the children's publisher I was selling books for asked me to join the company and teach other people about digital marketing so I started teaching courses on digital marketing and how to blog and do social media and then transitioned that into as the head of brand and social for a college textbook rental site. So I was the, the brand voice for the company. And funny enough, <laughs> at the same time, we're beta testing for advertisements on social platforms. We're just starting. So I was a beta tester for Twitter ads and Facebook ads, um, which was super exciting and really got me kind of on the floor of all of the new technology that was happening. I left the college rep. Uh, rental site and then moved. I was the head of marketing for 23andMe. Um, and then after I left 23andMe, I was, uh, I worked as an agent uh, at an agency, a marketing agency, and I ran a strategy for mobile and social for lots of great brands. Um, and so that's kind of how I ended up kind of going through and about marketing and digital marketing specifically. So I didn't have a traditional background at all in marketing. I had to kind of learn all of the theory and process. I left 23andMe and after I left the agency, I again took some time off from work. I think is very common, <laughs> especially um, people were unwell. So I had a couple of years off while they kind of came back into the work so once they were both stable. Um, and and then found myself kind of at Udacity. That is such an interesting story. I'm learning something along the way. I think that's really compelling because um, I think as well, I think continue to learn in this webinar series that not everyone's path is straight. Actually, I've met very few people who have straight straight career paths, and you kind of. Um, just follow your interests, and sometimes it leads you to incredible opportunities like this. So that's really, that's interesting. That's super cool. Uh, my next question for you is, <clears throat> how did you, and I think you answered this a little bit, but I'd love to know more. How did you decide to become a director of operations? So, you know, like, what interests you about this role, and um, what passions did you follow to get here? So... I, when I was looking for a, a role after kind of having taken that, um, 
I, I wasn't sure I wanted to go back into a marketing role. Um, and so I was, I was talking to some of my friends and I was, you know, checking in with my network like we do. Um, and one of my friends actually told me that Udacity was going to start. They were just working on a marketing nano degree and they were looking for someone to partner with and, um, and, and make the program kind of come alive. And I thought to at the time, I was like, this is so cool. I love education. I'm really passionate about it. And I really know digital marketing. So what better kind of opportunity to put two things that I really enjoy um, and kind of get back to the workforce after having a break. Um, and, and I think a lot of people, I think as you speak to them, I think we'll find out, and I'm sure some of the, the listeners, um, when you take a break from a career, it's a little bit, you, you feel a little bit insecure coming back into a career because the the knowledge and everything is fast now that you're not sure where you fit in coming to a role if you have if you take a year or two years off and it's a, a nice way to kind of gently re what would be a gentle reentry to the work um, and I was I was lucky enough to have a friend introduce me and I was amazing partner in the program with Anka Arnie's a delightful person and a fantastic instructor and I've learned tons from her and I'm sure some hopefully on the call will remember from the digital marketing degree and she and I grew up and built a school of business a fantastic year I'm so sorry Rebecca I think you froze I'm, I didn't really apologize <laughs> I think the internet might. I think. I'm sorry if. Can you hear me okay? Oh, I think I lost you. You got me? Okay. Um, I, hopefully, I didn't cut you off. I'm so sorry if I did. No, I My had next just question finished. for you. And I think, again, these all kind of feed into each other. But <clears throat> um, what does a typical. Oh. You know, it's one thing I think to hear about a job, but it's another thing to know what um, what the actual day to day work can look like. And I think it probably varies for you depending on your day. But we'd love to know, like, what how what does your eight hours at work look like? Yeah. So, well, for the most part, in the morning, I tend to try to have all of my meetings in the morning, and so I try to sync up with each of our team members. We have a group sync, and then each of the team members, just to kind of see where they are. Is there a blocker? Do, do they need help from me? Is there something I can do to, um, to kind of move along whatever project they're working on? And after the morning, I try to block off my afternoons um, really for reviewing, editing, and writing content. Um, I find that... It, it's a little bit hard to context switch too much when you're writing or when you're editing. And so I, I, I like to have a nice chunk of time. So my average day kind of looks like that. So I jump from meeting to meeting in the morning. Lunch I usually have with a coworker and try to think up on something. And then the afternoon is kind of more of a, you know, earphones on, typing and editing. Is there a delay maybe? can't hear you. I'm going to try. Are you able to hear me? Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't hear you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's okay. Um, I can, I know the next question that you had. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Oh, now I can hear you. Yay. Okay. So sorry. All the technical no, things. No, no worries. Here, what was question that you want to ask? Yes. Yeah. So <clears throat> I, again, this goes along with what does a typical day look like, which I think I caught most of. And I think that that's even in saying that you're giving some good advice and how to structure your day and how to organize your time. Because I think sometimes, obviously, in any role, um, your tasks can be overwhelming. So I think you're having a unique situation where you 
need to block off time to work on content and you allow yourself to do that and you structure your day around that. So I think that's really helpful. Um, also, I'm curious, what tools do you use on a daily basis? Um, it could be personal or professional that you think are really helpful. So there's a couple of tools that I use. My, one of my most favorite is Grammarly. Um, I find that I like having that other space to write in. Um, and I take, I, I do things like write something in a Google Doc, which is another great tool. Um, I write things in a Google Doc, and then I take the whole section and port it over to Grammarly and then have another look at it. And somehow I find that I catch mistakes that way, but I think it's maybe just the different environment or something, but it, it definitely helps me. I also use Grammarly in my browser um, so that if I'm writing emails or something quickly, it'll catch little, you know, little mistakes that I make. Um, I find Google Docs are a life saver. Um, I, I use all of them. <laughs> um, then the other, the other tool that I tend to use is Asana. I find that Asana is a great tool for project management. And so when we have lots of different programs that we're launching at, at the same time, uh, that can kind of help me keep things uh, just a little bit more in check. But those are the, those are the main ones that I've been using. Um, another one that I just dig as a marketer is Canva. I don't know if other folks have been using it, but Canva is super, especially if you're not a designer, it, I feel like it's almost like a shortcut for design. Um, so those are, those are, those are my favorites. <laughs> Those are all really good tools, and I feel like I must be a late adopter because I've just discovered most of them. <laughs> but Grammarly, I just uh, I just used uh, very recently. I added the extension maybe like a month ago, and it's been amazing. I love it. Um, I like it because it corrects things that are not only like spelling errors, but also things I might not otherwise have seen or otherwise would have been corrected. Um, and I also love Canva. Those are really good tools. Uh, and then I have just a couple more questions for you before we head over to live questions and um, would love to know, and this is kind of just for fun, but what are you reading right now? Whether that's something for fun for you personally, or maybe that's something um, to help you professionally. So I, I tend to have a nice little circuit of one book that I'm reading just be want to that I find enjoyable or inspirational. So um, that book that I'm reading right now, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm like three-fourths of the way through it, is Becoming by Michelle Obama. Um, and then I have uh, two books that I'm like actively trying to get through and, and reread. So one of them is The Innovator's Dilemma by uh, Clayton Christensen, um, which I've read a few times, but I find every time I read it, I, I learn something new. Um, and then there's a new edition of a, a standard a marketing book that I think readers have read, which is uh, uh, The Strategic Marketing Ma Management by Cherney. And he just published uh, a new edition of it that has a couple of new frameworks that I've heard really great things about. So I've been going through through that one also. Um, so those are my short list. <laughs> we are frozen again. I think you're back now. Oh, there we go. I think we're back together. I yeah. heard most of your recommendations, and I feel like I really love this question because I can tell I'm already going to love this question because I have gotten great book recommendations. <laughs> There, last week I was writing them, taking notes, <laughs> ordering them on Amazon. So that's great. Well, we're a little early, but we're going to move on over to live questions. Um, so students, if you have any questions for Rebecca, please put them in the chat and we'll do our best to get to them in the remaining time. Um, my first question for you, it's from Anshul and they ask, is Grammarly subscription, is the Grammarly, this is a good question, is the Grammarly subscription really worth it? I've been using the free version for a long time, and would you recommend to just go for it and find the subscription? Great question. That's a great question. Um, so I like the subscription because it also keeps your docs. So there are things that I'll go back to if I'm writing something or I, I won't be able to find it or I'm looking up a common response to something that I do in emails or something like that. So I have blitz that I keep in there. If you're, you know, so I, I would argue that, yeah, like I, I pay for the, pers the the subscription one and I actually pay for it on my own. Like even, I don't even go the kind of the reimbursement route or anything like that because I use it for both professional and personal 
even, and I'll, I'll go as far as to say, even when I write letters, like emails to my school for things, I will check them in Grammarly before I send them. Oh no, it's frozen again. Okay, you're back. There we go. I'm back. Okay. Well, I have the free version, so maybe I should pay for the subscription. <laughs> that was a good question. I have another one from Mohammed who wants to know, is Scrum Teams a good way to manage agile projects? If not, what are other alternatives? So, you know, we use an agile methodology for our, how we organize our teams, and we probably don't follow it to the letter. Even though we're not an engineering team, we're, we're producing content. You know, we do, uh, you know, daily stand-ups, and we have, you know, milestones that we're trying to hit. Um, but I, I would say that, you know, every team kind of works differently. And so if you think about like what the end goal is or what the deliverables are, or you know, we, we often use things like OKRs and KPIs to try to, you know, roadmap whatever we're working on. And so we're building toward something. So depending on what goal structure or if you're using, you know, what type of roadmap you're using to organize um, the the day-to-day -day activities of, of the team, it, there are lots of different models you can use, but I, we tend to use an agile model. Oop, you're frozen again. Okay, you're back. <laughs> How does that keep happening? <laughs> we found each other again. Yes. <laughs> My next question for you is another one from Anshul, and they would like to know <clears throat> how digital marketing can help someone who is interested in data analytics and machine learning. But how can you leverage that interest and also maybe taking a nano degree in digital marketing? Okay. Um, so, you know, it kind of depends on what you're going to do with the data analytics and the machine learning. So, um, you know, if you decide that you want to build a platform that leverages machine learning, you're going to have to find people who know about it who want to use it and get it in front of people. You know, they like, I use way to example, but like VHS data um, uh, that, you know, people just didn't know. So the beta version of, of the model of recording and keeping uh, television content was better. It was smart. It took up less storage. And people didn't know. VHS became the main and the went away like and so that like you, if you think about we see all the time where build great things but if nobody knows about they just into a obscure the interview is actually like a fan explorer of the kind of like the man of technology and understanding and how the market plays out um so i i would say like there are lots of kind of broadening your horizon aspects of it, but but I would also say that you know depending on what you do, uh, no things can be really especially if you're going into data. A lot of data deals with marketing. We actually like will be announcing a new course that relates a lot more to marketing and data soon. Um, and I as a um, and so I would say that there's a lot that you use and leverage in both learning and in data anal analysis that really deals with like business metrics and, and marketing and having the ecosystem in both of them is, is really a, a fantastic way to approach it. Um, I'll also say that there's a lot about how you campaigns and advertisement that really leverage both analytics and uh, rely on a lot of machine learning in the back end to make things happen. So if you're looking for jobs in, in companies like Facebook or Google um, that really do a lot of advertising, right? like a lot of their revenue generation is through advertising, even, even though you might be someone on an engineering team working on machine learning, you might be building something for digital marketing. And so having a firm understanding of how that happens in the market can be really helpful. Yeah, that's good advice. <clears throat> I think that that's a, um, 
it's clear that they can go hand in hand and they don't have to be, you know, your, your nano degrees or your schools or whatever your passions are don't have to be separate of one another. I think that they can make you more unique if you decide to pursue something like both digital marketing and data analytics or machine learning. Um, my next question for you is, Rebecca, what do you edit when you're in your editing mode? <laughs> that's a question from Kathleen. Oh, what, do I, oh, that's, what do I edit? Um, I edit all kinds of things, but for the most part, it's usually uh, classroom content. So, you know, as we're developing content, as we receive content from, you know, great instructors around the world um, and subject matter experts, we still vet all of that and we go through it before we put it in front of students. And so we often going through content that we've received, either editing video content to say like, oh, we really need an image here, um, and storyboarding, or literally at the scripting stage, going through and, and refining the language so that it flows better, or you know, pointing out if there's something missing. Um, so I'll, I'll do things like that, but then there's also things like uh, promotional material. So if we have a blog post or something that's going out, um, I will often go through, go through those things. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but the, 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 that's the primary kind of things that I that I end up editing. Yeah, that's helpful. That's clarifying. <laughs> it's a tough question. Um, yeah. And then and my last live question for you, and then I have one last one of my own. Okay. Oh, about your management style, team structure, and the flow of your work. So my management style, and I lost that's you. Like three questions all at once. That's okay. Um, what was the beginning part? Can you just say that one more time? Yeah, of course. Um, the, can you tell us about your management style, team structure, and the flow of work? Yeah, so um, I would say that management style, I, I rely on the, or I really, <laughs> I really leverage the notion of a manager's job is to remove blockers, hire great people, and let them do great work. Um, and so, from that perspective, I really I have a very like strict kind of approach to how we hire, um, and so we we really ask people to do a sample project and we vet them based on the actual work that that they do, um, and so we try we also try to leverage that to really remove unconscious bias. So we want to make sure that we're looking for people who work shows who they are, not their resume specifically, and and not what they look like or who they. Know. So I try really hard to make sure that we're really using a project-based approach. And so when people come on, they know what they're going to be working on because whatever the project is that we had them, we use to vet their expertise and their experience, that's really what they're going to start off working. Um, and I think of all of our team members have great ideas. Everyone's on the same level. Um, I might be the person who makes the end decision. Uh, in the structure, but for the most part, really what we want are great, like we want to make sure that everyone feels empowered to do things. So I, I also use uh, one-on-ones as an opportunity to really have a sit down with each each member of the team. And I try to dedicate at least 15 to minutes per week uh, for each person who, who directly reports to me. Um, I also have a, an ongoing kind of rolling notes for everyone. And so that's an opportunity that everyone can put their agenda and I do it to my supervisor too. So I always have an agenda for that one-on-one -on -one and I try to use that time to get through not only any anything that I'm working on that I need feedback on, but I also want to work with, especially the people who report to me, where they want to go in their career. Um, and so that that time is kind of split 50-50 for what, what are you working on and what, what are your goals and how can I help you get there? Um, uh, that's have a very loose, open answer to uh, to the way that we do it. We also do, you know, team meetings. We do quarterly things where we try to do um, an opportunity for learning that goes along with it. So we have guests periodically that come in, uh, and you know, we try really hard to make sure that everyone feels that they're valued on, on the team and that their contribution is really um, is escalated and highlighted so that knows how hard everyone's working and the great work that they're doing. I think it's really helpful to hear your perspective on that because I think for people maybe entering the corporate world for the first time, um, the struggle, you know, the workflow and management can be intimidating, and and even the interview process. I think what you said about the interview process that you really look for quality candidates and you're more concerned 
fruit that they can produce rather than their resume or who they are um, is helpful because I think that um, just gives students a lot of confidence that there um, are great management styles out there and that their work that they do throughout this program will benefit them when they're when they start applying for jobs and they can point to their work and it might if they're career changers or um, coming from a different, you know, different field. I think that's really helpful. Uh, and for my last question for you, Rebecca, current students in the School of Business. Can you say that one more time? You froze at the very beginning. Oh no, you are frozen. Oh, I think you're back. Can you say it one more time? Yes, of course. Sorry about that. Can you hear me okay now? Yes, I can. Hopefully so. Uh, my question for you is what advice do you have for students in current students in the school? It froze again, but I think I got the gist of it. So I, I would say that, um, uh, advice just generally speaking for a school of business, but but also anyone who's kind of in the career that it is so often that people take breaks, um, especially if you're a woman and you have a family and you have kids and um, and that every time I came back from a break, I was so hungry for a new adventure. And I, I really tried to look at it with, you know, just being open to possibilities, not not worrying too much about what I did in the past or, or exactly where I was going to go in the future. So I think being open to possibilities is a great one. The other thing, which I think we forget sometimes, is just staying with all the great people that you meet along the way, whether it's in school that you meet them or in a job. Um, there are so many great relationships and really cultivating those relationships, whether you're currently in that role or you've gone to another company, I think can be really impactful and powerful. That's really good advice. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I really appreciate it. Thank and you. Um, we're, we have, yeah, just wrapping up. Thank you everyone for joining. I really appreciate it. We'll have a, um, we have these every Wednesday at 1 p.m. for a different school. Um, if you have any um, follow-up questions, feel free to post them in the chat. We have a community manager there right now. Thank you so much for joining today. Bye.